Welcome to People Love Process. Sometimes just moving forward on a rough idea that comes to mind leads to something creative and fun. That's what I'll take you through in this movie. We're going to create simple, iconic personas. The best part of this style is anyone can do it. All you need to be able to do is doodle. Just like you see here, nothing more complicated than that. And then we're going to take those uh, roughly drawn ideas and we're going to build an iconic vector persona from it. This is going to be fun, so let's just dive into it. Now, this all started uh, not too long ago. It was uh, late 2019. And um, I was developing a course for LinkedIn Learning, and I was showcasing some scripts. And one of the scripts I've had for quite a while is um, just random rotate. And so you have a bunch of elements, and you can run the script on the selection of those uh, vector objects in Illustrator, and it would randomly rotate them. And I was kind of struggling with, well, what do I do to make this interesting? Because it's... It, to be frank, it's something that I didn't even include in the movie I did for this channel um, about a month or two ago because I don't find the script really helpful at all. Um, but I was trying to do it in that course that I was developing. I decided, well, what if I just make the icons fun and it randomly rotate them? And I thought of, you know, stacking them like this and having a diverse mix of kind of creative, iconic characters. I didn't want to spend a lot of time on this. So I just started doodling out all these drawings. And it doesn't need to be perfect. You can see at one point I was using my red flare pen, not my black one. And then I was marking the ones I liked that I thought had potential, but I wanted to keep it simple because I didn't want to invest a lot of time into it. So this is where it started. I only needed a certain amount to create a design kind of like this, but as I got into it, I was going, well, these are kind of fun. These are kind of cool, and that's why I want to feature it in this movie. Now, of course, when I draw them like this, I scan them in again with the flatbed scanner. Flatbed scanners are very inexpensive but can become so useful for doing all kinds of things, scanning in sketches like this, but you can see, uh, scan in textures or photographs, all kinds of cool stuff you can do with the flatbed scanner. So I'm showing you that again, just to remind you that uh, kind of what you don't want to do is use your cell phone and push the camera or push that image to your desktop and then build off it because it's never going to be flat and uh, perfect. It might be skewed a little bit. So that's why I don't do that. Um, now, again, you don't have to be a great drawer. I think all designers should draw whether or not they ever want to become an illustrator. That's not the point. It's how you capture ideas and then you bridge the gap between that um, that idea that comes to mind and fleshing it out in the real world. So if I turn this layer on, you can see my drawings weren't perfect. They just encapsulated an idea and captured it. And then I can build it perfectly using simple shapes in Illustrator, like the ellipse tool for the eyes or using the polygon tool to create a triangle. And then the teeth or kind of the teeth. If we zoom in on this one, you can see these T shapes. They started as a rectangle, and then I used the corner widget just around the bottom to create the teeth, circles, and so very simple shapes. The host shape, all these shapes, all these characters are, in essence, a square format, but this one is kind of a squircle type thing. And uh, this is a circular one. I use the only part of this that I'm not using a shape on is anything that's a line work. So this is just a stroke. All these in the circle one are just strokes. The lines on this cat are just strokes. And that's the commonality that keeps the, the consistency between all the icons. I use all the same sizing and that and the same format, meaning a square format, even though the profile of that shape might be a squircle, might be a cat head, might be a circle, so on and so forth. But that's what's going to retain and make that iconography work. Now, I was only going to do maybe, I don't know, 16 of these just to demonstrate the rotating script. And then as I got into it, 
I just kept creating and creating more until I started having a whole group of them. And this just shows a bunch of them. And all of these are, again, are just the raw vectors. I haven't um, expanded anything here. So if you go over here, you can see if I go into this and select this, you can see all the circles that make it almost looks like a Mickey Mouse hat. But that's how I created the lines that will eventually be the hair. So all the same principles used in all these icons are all the same size. And this is what I get it to in terms of the raw vectors. Now, of course, I'm going to clean up the art. So this just shows the difference here in that all of these have everything expanded. So all of these are just filled shapes. And in this case, they're filled magenta. And that's just to denote to myself in my build file that uh, this art is finished. I can then color it however I want. So that's kind of how I thought about this initially. And I wasn't planning on keep doing these, but they were so much fun that I did keep doing them. And that's what I want to cover in this movie is more that I came up with. I had a drawing template and I actually draw these out um, a lot bigger than I actually build it. So these are six that I, I uh, drew out the other day for this movie. And uh, this drawing template, by the way, is in the exercise file. And so that's what we're going to work with. We're going to take this sketch here. And again, I just scan it in with my flatbed scanner. And this is the part that I'll first do. Let's go ahead and go to graphic styles, select an outline, go here, grab the square tool because these are all squares. So since I drew it out with the square, I'm not going to build all of these. Um, and then the ones I don't build, I'm going to encourage you to take a stab at either recreating what I created or creating the ones I didn't create. I like the pig. I think I'm going to start there. So we're going to go ahead and just make the square here. And I'll go ahead and select the sketch and I'm just going to mask it. And now if I turn on this layer, this is actually the size I built it at. So you can see it's quite a bit smaller. And if I go up here, this is the size. Why did I start with this size? I don't know. I just, this is just what I ended up doing. And I stuck with it and it worked okay. So I'm just going to copy this, select the sketch and just paste in. This is a good way to use the control panel. I do this all the time. I'll punch in the same format. That way it sizes it down. And now I'll just drag it down. Now we can zoom in because obviously I want to zoom in here like that. And turn on Smart Guides, Command U. So I got the anchor. I'll snap it here. And it's on the, the sketch layer, which I want. Now I'm going to go to transparency. I'm just going to knock this back so I can just see it like that. We'll lock this layer here. Now these elements down below are ones that I created because I kept using the same type of shapes. So on this one, this is what I used to create teeth, but it all started with a rectangle, you know, like that. And I can direct select this and just round the bottom to get the tooth shape. So uh, rather than doing that every time, I just save the shape and then the same size of eyes I consistently use on a lot of these and the nose, which tends to be a uh, triangle. And then this, of course, is the standardized um, size that I use for um, the line work that shows up in these. And this is four points, I believe. Yeah, four points. And then as I started creating them, the starting shape, I started reusing some of the same shapes, whether it's a, a square with rounded corners or maybe it's an octagon. Here's a squircle right here like that. This one is that kind of two shape I showed you, simple square, simple circle. But just to show you one of them I created, here's the sketch and here's all the shapes on it. And then these shapes just became um, the four point lines like that, along with the creases in his forehead like that. And then this offset of the head shape is just uh, offsetting this um, from the base 
to create the, the same distance of a gap uh, on these. So I go in here and I just punch this up to four like this, and then I'd expand it, and then I'd punch it out of the hair shape, and then that would make the consistent gap the same weight as the line. So those are the principles we're going to be using, and I'm first going to build uh, this pick. So where would I start on this? Well, I think the, the easiest place to start is to create a circle. So I'm going to go ahead and create a circle like this. And then I don't want it a perfect circle. So I'm going to select these anchors here. I'm going to go down like that just to create the bottom part like this. And then... Go like this. I use this to align it, so we'll align to center, kind of like that. We'll select these two, hit S, and this is, oop. I really wish they would have made this feature more intuitive. You have to select these. Now, if you hit S, it changes like this, and then you can pull these out to kind of get this like this but notice if you accidentally hit another key like I did there um, it'll it'll mess it up so they should have implemented this a lot better in my opinion but I'm just gonna go all the way to the edge here now I know that is where I want it so I'll take this and I'm just gonna move it down and snap it to the anchor that's in the circle then let's see something like that okay and then take this and just lop off the top part of this head using Pathfinder like that. So we have the bottom part of the head. We have the top part of the head. Now this is where I'm going to move these down to kind of get that angle showing in my sketch. And I'm just going to go ahead and round those like that. Select these, round that. I think that looks pretty good for the shape of the pig's head. Now I'll just fuse these together, unite them like that. The ears a little easier because you can start with a rectangle, round that part of the ear. And I think I'm going to do this here. Move this up. And then I did that because I want that angle to be less severe than, you know, a perfect cornered element like that. I think that looks pretty good. And I think these ears are just going to fuse into the head ultimately. Then I'll take this and we'll go object, offset. I'm going to do a negative number, maybe negative seven. We'll see what that looks like. Maybe eight. That looks good. Take the scissors. I'll just cut off the parts I don't need here and here. Delete these. I'll extend that over. And I think on this one, we'll go to graphic styles because I did save it as a graphic style. So that will be the inner part of the ear. I think this needs to come up somewhere right about there. I think that's good. Let's go down here. We'll take these. I think the eyes are going to be a lot smaller but 
actually what I'm going to do at times is I go up here take the background shape which is the proportion again align it to center so I know this is perfect so I'm going to take this clone it command C command F and we'll go into the reflect find the central anchor point reflect it over so his nostrils are right where we want it we'll start up here we're going to create the nose shape so we'll start off as a simple oval I'll figure out the width kind of like that then I'll select these two anchors and distort it to get that kind of shape you expect from a pig's snout take this one move this up and I think these going down let's see that I think what I need to do though I need to put an anchor right here and I'm not going to worry about reflecting it on the right because I'll just do it on one side then I'll cut it in half because we need it to do kind of this bump up here like that I think this needs to even move over a bit. And this will ultimately just knock out of uh, the head of the pig. Okay. Just use a shape to edit a shape. So I'll select these two, go to Pathfinder, minus front, clone it, Command C, Command F, use the reflect tool, find a central anchor point, reflect it over and delete that we don't need it unite these so that looks fine like that then i think we'll do the eyes let's hurry up and create those a little bigger like that clone it find the central anchor point reflect it over let's go ahead and reflect the ear clone those command C command F reflect that over now we'll do the mouth and I'm going to do that create most of the shape by just going to offset path here we did eight, but we need it to come in quite a bit more. We'll try 11, see what that looks like. Maybe in 12. I think that's, yeah, I think that'll work. And now I'm going to use this anchor to create this shape select these bottom two anchor points and use the corner widget just to create that smile select these two minus front so we got the mouth and then down here we have his tongue so we'll put his tongue in like this and now because I'm lazy I'll go down and grab my teeth because I don't always use the same size it just depends on you know what the how complex the icon is I try to always make these super simple something like that clone it bring it over we know our gap is four points so if i go one two three four we can get that same gap that's going to match these spaces in the ear now that we have this i think i'm going to bump it up just a little bit like that 
clone these, go to the central anchor point, reflect them over like this. And just to visually see if this is going to work before I commit to it or build it out into a clean format, we'll just go ahead and fill these with black like that. Everything that will be a knockout will be colored white. So we'll fill these with white like that. Select this, copy, paste it behind the nostrils. Command B. These will be black too, like that. So far, so good. And I think this is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and unite these. I'm not sure about the tongue, though. I'll go ahead and do that. That looks pretty good. Bring this to the front. And let's color these white. Oops. Like that. I think that looks good. I think these need to come in a little. And maybe down just a bit. I think that looks good. Although, one thing I'm going to change is I'm going to go in here, use the lasso tool, and just lasso these anchors, because I think these teeth are a little long, so I'm going to bump those up just a little bit, like that. I'm not so sure about the tongue. I'm going to try something. I'm going to go here and go path. We're going to go to offset path again. I'm going to do a negative number, the same gap I have on the spaces in the ear, like that. And I'm just going to, I'm just testing this to see if I like it. I think I like that better. So this is the Rob build here. Um, so what I would do at this point, minus the the proportional shape is I'll just group these, make a copy, and I'll just move that here. And now on these, I'll just go ahead and build this out clean. So on these, I would go ahead and expand them. So we go outline stroke like that, select everything white here, the mouth. We don't have everything. Just so we can see it, we're going to color it this color. I'll unite these. We'll select the ears. We'll select the base. Unite those. Select this on top. Select the base. Punch it through so you can see our sketch below. We can turn off our sketch temporarily. Then all these, this, and the rest of the head We'll unite all those together. We're basically making a compound path. So if we go to appearance, it's now a compound path. And this is where I'll put subtle um, rounding in. Uh, you can use the corner widget. I tend to use uh, dynamic corners by Astute Graphics because I don't know if that's the wit. Actually, that looks good. So I'll just apply it over here. And then even on something like this, I go in and put just little tiny rounds here. You don't really have to do that, but I think it just looks better. And I think that looks pretty good. And I think out of our color palette I have for this series, um, I'd probably do either orange, red. Well, red, red pig's not bad. Let's see a purple pig. Purple. It could be any of these. Even aqua pig. 
sounds like a punk band name, Aqua Pig. I'll stick with that. So that's the pig one. We're going to do a, a couple more. So we're going to go back to our sketch here. I'm going to zoom in. And all this was, again, was a mask. So I'm going to go ahead and unmask it. That's a keyboard shortcut, F2. I've been using that literally for 20 some years now. It's just second nature. I'm going to outline this. Ah, that's too thick. Uh, let's go in the stroke just to make this smaller like that. And I think the next one I'll do, let's do this dude over here. This guy looks like a a frazzled professor of sorts. So we'll mask that. And let's go back to layers. We're going to jump to this one. First, let's go ahead and set the transparency on this to 15. Oops, not the pig. We're going to do a new one. So we'll put that here. So we know this is the size we need. So I'll just snap it into location, lock that layer, and now we'll build this guy. This one will be uh, pretty simple because uh, we have areas that we can create a lot of the art with just strokes. So I'm going to create his glasses first, like that. And we'll use the size stroke that we're using for this. And then I will go into the corners. I think you can use corner widget. I use both, actually. It just depends what I'm doing. That looks pretty good. And I'd even put small rounds up here. Just so on the inside, because ultimately this will be a gap. Um, it won't be uh, an outline like this, I think. Kind of like that. That way we get these nice little rounds here on the interior part like that. And again, just for clarity, let's go ahead and bring this up. I do this all the time when I'm working like this because this actually, at times, because of the snapping bug that's still in Illustrator, even though they said they fix it back in months ago, they really haven't. It's still broken. It still doesn't work at times. Um, I don't trust guides, especially for reflecting stuff. It's I think it's better just to trust the anchor point because you know where that's at. So I would clone this, Command-C, Command-F. And uh, for me, it's just F3. And then I go to the central anchor point, reflect this over. So now I know it's right where it needs to be. Then I can snap this, snap that, drag these anchor points down. I don't need this top line, so I'll cut it with the scissor tool, select these two, get the nose, then actually now that I'm thinking about it, I could have, this doesn't need to go all the way up like that. Then I can take this to get the bridge the glasses, but I don't need these lines, just the U shape. There we go. I keep thinking this guy's name needs to be like Smedley, something like that. Sounds like a college professor type name, Professor Smedley. We'll go ahead and align it like this. Select these two, give them the bald head. Again, we don't need all the lines, so the line at the bottom we wouldn't want. We'll delete that. That looks good. Now, these shapes, this is going to be actually the color on this final will be the inside of these shapes. This outline will ultimately be a gap in the artwork. So think of it that way. So. If we want to create his forehead wrinkles, this might be that one. 
And remember, I'm using four points. So if I drag and snap down here and I go four, it's still going to be overlapping two. So if I go one, two, three, four, um, I mean, it'll be butt fit there. Now I want four as a gap, so I'll just do it eight. So I did four, five, six, seven, eight. So now it has this gap in between the glasses is consistent. Then I can copy this, make this a little smaller, like that. I can align it to the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a case where I'm not sure I'll have a second line. I'll just keep this one here. And we'll make sure that's centered. I think that'll be good enough. Now, the hair is going to be, I want it, it'll be the color, but then it'll have this gap in it. So knowing that, I'm going to go ahead and just create a circular shape, starting from the corner. Something like that. Create a rectangle shape. I'm going to make a copy and bring that down. Take this, take this, and go to Pathfinder, minus front, like that. Then I'll bring this back up here. Something like this. And then on this shape of the glasses, I'll go ahead and clone it, Command-C, Command-F. And even though it goes down here like this, I'm going to go like this. And we'll go ahead and path, outline, stroke. Can select the middle part of this and just get rid of it. We colorize this. Just to show you it's on top, I'll select this and I'll go minus front. Select this. We'll fuse those two together. Oops. Actually, now that I think about it, I should have done this on the initial sh ah. Well, that's okay. I make these kind of mistakes when I'm building anyway. There. Then we'll select all these. We'll go like this. I'll select this shape, clone it. Just so you can see what I'm doing, outline it, path, outline stroke. We're just using this to edit the air shape, so it doesn't need to look pretty in order to do that. So I'll select this, minus front. So now we have this shape, which will just end up being a fill. Once again, this outline will be a gap. Okay, let's do his eyes. Because on his eyes... These will be solid shapes like this. Make sure we're not exceeding the bounds here. Like that. I'll clone it. We'll do the pupils. Make sure that's in front. Now all we've done is created a donut type of shape. So if I fill it, you can see that'll end up being the glasses. I can clone this, go to the reflect tool, find a central anchor point, reflect it over the other side. We can do that with the hair as well. Clone it, find a central anchor, reflect it to the other side. And now we'll do his mouth. His mouth will be pretty easy. We're going to use the same thickness. This will just be a rectangle like this. Snap it to our proportional guide. We'll just use the corner. Oops. Oops. 
use the corner widget and you can just figure out how much of a round something like that's fine I'm gonna cut it here and cut it here then this part I don't need you know what I shouldn't have done that quite yet okay we're gonna inset this so uh, even though the function is called offset um, offset is the positive number to go offsetting from a vector object we're going to do an actual inset which is just a negative number so if we go eight we can see what that looks like not far enough so we'll do negative 11 uh, it could go even further that's 14 there we go We'll do 14. Now, this ultimately will just be, well, let me think about this. Yeah, okay. Now we'll take this and we'll cut this. Because I'm always thinking, what will it look on a light-colored white background? What will it look like on a dark or colorized background? Because I use it on both. Okay. Take the teeth, find the center. Two, three, four. So you can see in my sketch, I had a lot more teeth. That's okay. I'm not going to have that many on here. We'll have about that many. Clone it. Find the central anchor. Reflect it over. Group that, I'm going to clone it, rotate it like this. And now I'm going to go one, two, one, two. That way it has that same gap that these gaps will be. But ultimately, this will be a color. I'm just thinking here. Yeah. Okay. So I set it up the right way for the raw vectors. So what I'm going to do is just select those here and clone them and group them and move a copy over here because I want to outline everything that's created with these strokes like this and his forehead wrinkles we'll go object path off uh, outline stroke so now all of these are stroke shapes this is what I want so I think I want to fuse these together Sometimes this can get a little confusing. I think this is what I want. So let's go ahead and just unite them together like that. And now I'll select this and I'll go compound release. Then I'm going to take the outside shape, get rid of it. Oh, I forgot to do the bridge of his nose. Let's do that really quick. Like this. We'll bring this to the front. Select his nose and forehead minus front to get that gap in there. And 
select this. Oh, see, once you do a, um, a Pathfinder move, it diverts to a group. It doesn't retain the compound nature. So you need to make sure you do that so when you minus front, it will won't disappear, but it will always revert to a group. This is one of the most annoying features in Illustrator. It uh, doesn't have to be that way, but for some reason they keep it that way. So not completely sure why. Uh, let's just so you can see what I'm doing. Let's color this, and I'm going to go again, release. Because all I want is I want to take these teeth... We'll unite them together so it's a compound. I'll take the inner part here. Let me think about this. No, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to get rid of this inner part. I'm going to knock this out of this background shape. And then I'm going to go into isolation mode just so I can select these. Just bring them up enough to overlap. Do the same on the bottom like that. Select this, select these, unite these. We're going to take all of these shapes and we'll take the hair and we'll unite all of these like that. And we'll go ahead and fill, let's see, a professor's kind of stuffy. We'll do it like that. So that looks pretty good. And you can, on these, I might go in. No, I probably wouldn't. I'd probably leave it like that. He looks pretty good. There's one thing I did that kind of bugs me is the gap in between the bottom of the nose and the top edge of the mouth. It's not consistent with this. So, so I would go in and fix that. I should have paid attention to that. I wasn't paying attention. I think it's somewhat an easy fix. It depends how many... I think within this distance we can make it up. So I'll go like this. Make sure it's in the center, drag it down. So this is the distance we need to make up. Okay, that's not that big a deal. We'll go like this. So what I usually do is pull it beyond that, then pull it back and snap it. Now it's the right distance, like that. And that continuity really does um, play a part in making these all work together. So he's kind of fun, I like him. Let's go ahead and go to the third one. We'll build one more. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. We'll take the vectors here, go to graphic styles, and we'll select like five points like that. And I think the last one I'll do, I think I, I like this kind of weird He's not an octopus because he only has four. So a uh, quadrupus. <laughs> that sounds that sounds kind of bad. Uh, he's just a alien jellyfish. Let's call him that. Okay. Let's mask him. And oops, made a copy of that. Get rid of that. We'll go ahead and adjust the transparency. We'll do fifteen again. And turn on the layer we're going to build this on, which is this, like that. And we'll lock that layer. This will get about as easy as it gets. So I'll make a copy of this shape, like that. And we're just going to align it to the top left. And I'll size it appropriately like this. Bring this down here like that. I definitely want it the same 
size as it goes into the body. So you can see our drawings not even, well, it, you know, now that I think about that, that really doesn't need to remain that size. So I'm going to lop off the top on this one. Just going to bring this out here like that. And then this one I think can get shorter as it goes in there. So once again, just simple shape building. All these will have the same kind of like these going up and stops here. These come down. I want that to be all in the same plane. So I'll just figure out what that is like this. I'll take these three shapes and I'll just unite it. Then I can take the bottom two, select them, use the corner widget to get that. Select the two on the inside here. And again, use the corner widget for that. So that's pretty easy. And we'll go down here. Think on these gaps. We'll go one, two, three, four. Copy of this, one, two, three, four. Now, I'm not sure I might have to adjust some things because by the time I get to the other side, it might not be spaced out right. Let's go ahead and check this, reflect it over. Yeah, it's pretty tight. So here's, here's what you can do. Um, I think on these, knowing this is four here, I would do something something like that. And like that. Just so we have some continuity in the spacing. Bring those down like this. All these come to this base. Like that. I can take these, unite them. Go to the top of this head. We'll give this a rounded top. I don't, I think it looks better if he's a little flat on top. And I think on these, I didn't think of this until after I rounded it, but oops, wrong tool. I think I'm going to remove those. And then the base is going to be here. So I'll slide this down till it aligns with that. And then I can take these and round those. Nope, 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 nope. These I have to round first. There we go. And then on these, we'll do that. There we go. Okay, now all these lines I want to align. Like that. Make a copy. Oops.
I just want that gap in between all of them to be consistent. Let's see what the size looks like. I think that looks fine. Clone it. Find a central anchor point. Flip it over. Select these. Command J to weld them together like that. And on this, I don't want, I want to make sure I don't have, see, I have round corner. I, on these, I don't want this tip to round. I want that to be straight. So we'll make sure those remain this way. The other ones are fine as is. We'll take the eye. You can see this, it's a super simple style. It's a lot of fun though, just kind of keeping a notepad on your desk as you're working, you go, oh, that'd be a fun shape. Select these, unite them like that. I'm gonna make a copy of this shape. And then I'm gonna close it out for no other reason than to trim the tops off so it goes behind like that. Now, start with the rectangle shape. This. I don't want the bottom to be perfectly straight, kind of like that. Minus front, just select these two, like this. We need to do his chin because evil alien jellyfish definitely have chins. Select this, go to the shape building tool and just get rid of that shape. We can size this just like that. Now we just need to do his teeth. Let's go ahead and zoom in. And these ones, I'm gonna make his teeth a lot smaller. Because overall, his mouth's a lot smaller. Like that. Clone it. Now that I'm seeing that, I think I'm going to adjust the size of his mouth. It's kind of a little too narrow. So what I want to do, just to guide me, I'm going to take this, one, two, three, four, then I'll just widen it so that gap, again, is consistent. Then I'll go back and I'll round this and round that side. Let's go ahead and unite those. Clone it. Rotate them. Then they can come down here. And because this curves, we'll just have to elongate these so they fuse to the base of the body outside the mouth like that and we have all of our raw vectors done for this one so I can select this and I can go ahead and group it clone it move a copy to the side now we'll go ahead and just select all these 
and go path, outline, stroke. Select the eyes. Unite all of these. The body is one shape, so I can just select it and go minus front. Cuts through everything. Take all the teeth. Oh, what I do with them? Oops, I had the background shape. Unite them. Bring it to front, minus front. Once I have the mouse shape done. By the way, this again, if I go to appearance, it's, it's, I, I'm so used to after running a, a Pathfinder method, I just go Command 7, or I'm sorry, F7. Uh, which turns it into a compound because that means when I take this and minus it from that with Pathfinder, um, it'll revert to a group. So I automatically, after I do this, I don't even think about it. I just hit F7. It turns it into a compound shape. That way, uh, with a character like this, we can go ahead and color him however we think he should be. This guy might look good in red just because he's kind of a mean jellyfish, alien jellyfish, like that. So that's how I create iconic characters. And now that I'm thinking about it, I just thought, I think I kind of screwed up on this one. It's not a huge screw up because I can adjust it. Um, like here, I would go in because technically these aren't as wide. I should have done an offset of the... A proportional shape of the square and it wouldn't have happened but um, we'll hit S and now oh, 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 we'll do this one oops okay I really don't like how they implemented that um, scale equally thing in Illustrator it's not intuitive at all we'll go here so I'll drag those over. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and then we'll fix his glasses like this. Like that. It's not, it, it's not a big thing, but I think what I'd do, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should just go ahead and put this back to a rectangle. It'd be a lot easier like that. Then I'll just hit the perimeter, boom, like that. Then I can select all these and just round it to whatever looks better. I actually like that a lot more now. Then I'll just go to the glasses. We'll select these anchors. Make sure these guys are selected. And notice how it's not wanting to snap. That's the snapping bug in Illustrator. Now it does. Um, the Illustrator team, it's been 13 years. They still can't fix it. So I have no hope that they ever will. There we go. So now that's consistent with the other ones. It goes all the way to actually... Uh, his head doesn't go all the way to the top, but that's okay because I have a lot of art that like the top of the cat head one, for example, the same area didn't go to the to the edge. But overall, I think these are going to work fine. Now, when I started doing this, I, of course, created a bunch of them, and then I turned it into a diversity art print. And I came up with a specific tonal family. So if I go ahead and just uh, select art over here, let's say this little devil guy, colorize them. I tried to keep uh, a nice system of colors going. I just wanted to reinforce that idea of diversity. And so if we select this, color it purple, it's just to show there's a lot of different um, uh, individuals and personalities in the world. You're one of them. And uh, this was a fun way to kind of uh, document that and share it. So this is what my original uh, art print that I did back in late 2019 going into 2020. 
and um, it was going good. And then COVID hit and I kind of forgot about it. But every now and then it comes to mind and I'll start and I'll create a few more icons. So I created three more today. The other three I'll probably go ahead and build at some point, but I've added to it. What I showed you initially on this layer uh, down here is where I kind of ended up at, but I've added to this even more. And so in the exercise files, I have uh, these wallpapers and you can see a lot of new ones have been added since 2020. Uh, because anytime I have some spare time, I'll go ahead and um, I'll do just that. I'll create some new ones. So this one, my favorite all time, the Shogun uh, one I did down here. I'm a geek. So, yes, I have a cling on the bottom here. I have a nice little happy pirate bird lover here. A lot of animal type of themes. Uh, here's a social media influencer, I guess you can say, happy little plant. So a lot of cool ones in here. But this is uh, a set of wallpaper that I created that's included in the exercise files. And that includes um, images you can use on your cell phones or iPad in this case, along with the desktop. So this movie wasn't distinctly a creative challenge, but that said, I challenge you to create your own unique iconic personas. Start doodling out ideas and then scan them in and start building your iconic vector art. If you do this, please email me what you create. I'd love to see it. And to further motivate you, I'll pick a few favorites and ship you a signed original diversity print. Now, once again, my diversity print is this. And it's printed on a nice uh, cotton stock. So um, if you share what you iconic persona you create, I'm going to pick my favorites. And each one of those, I'm going to ship you a signed art print like this. Uh, that you could put up in your work area. So remember, I've included my drawing template and the complete wallpaper set within the exercise files for this movie. The wallpaper set, again, includes Apple and Android uh, phone wallpapers, Mac and PC desktop computer wallpapers, and Apple iPad wallpapers that come in a vertical and a horizontal format. Um, I always have my iPad on a horizontal format, so that's the one I'm using there. So you can access the exercise files as with any other movie on People of Process channel, and you can find that in a link in the movie's description below. If you like the People Love Process channel, please subscribe. Give this movie a simple like if you enjoyed it. Comment on the movie, ask questions, share a link to it on social media or better yet, become a member. Any of these things improves the reach of my channel so more people can benefit from its content. Until next time, thank you for watching People of Process. And as always, I hope this content helps you improve your own creative process.